Don't tell me you support the Second Amendment if you are not actively training. Oh, geez, fighting? I don't know if Jesus would do that. Uh, boy, uh, violence? Uh... We believe in peace through superior firepower, amen? You heard that right. We believe in peace through superior firepower. That was right-wing extremist Pastor Jason Storms, and he wants to spread his faith through the barrel of a gun. But Storms isn't just talking about violence. He runs Operation Save America, and it's turning his churches into boot camps. Take a look. Number two, by yourself, if you don't have one, a combat weapon, AR-15. Standard combat weapon today. Get yourself an AR-15. I would strongly recommend. Everybody have an AR-15 and a 9mm. Lots of other things you could buy. You can get yourself an AR-15 for $100,000. If you don't have one, I can't encourage you strongly enough to get one. Get an AR-15, get a combat weapon, and get some other combat gear. The rise of the Christian nationalist right has been a golden age for people like Jason Storms. He made his name harassing people outside of Planned Parenthoods and abortion clinics, and crusading nationwide against contraception. And now Storms is calling for more than just harassment. He wants his followers to prepare for a battle with the federal government. That won't be anything new for Storms, who spent January 6th attacking the United States Capitol. We're at the Capitol. Bunch of guys rushed in, got into the rotunda, overtook the building. They got tear gassed. What Storms is trying to do isn't that different from what any other extremist organization does. By framing the clash between his followers and the government as both inevitable and desirable, he's getting his followers comfortable with the idea of sacrificing their lives in shootouts with federal agents. And his Operation Save America boot camps look concerningly similar to combat training camps. It doesn't help that Storms has based his headquarters in Waco. Storms and his extremists run afoul of the law almost everywhere they go, even in states that are sympathetic to their cause. In Tennessee, a judge granted a restraining order against Storms' group after armed attackers raided an abortion clinic and threatened to, quote, take the whole building down. In footage recorded by Storms' followers, they cheerfully talk about terrorizing the staff and patients, and then told police they plan to escalate the situation into violence. Police moved in and arrested three Operation Save America lunatics, including one armed with a pistol. Operation Save America works on an intimidation-based model. In Tennessee, over 150 demonstrators spent a week protesting outside clinics in Nashville and St. Juliet. Jason Storms personally blocked the doors of one clinic, forcing staff to go into a multi-hour security lockdown. None of this behavior is new. In 1999, the Department of Justice sued Operation Rescue, Operation Save America, and others for obstructing federally protected access to abortion clinics. In the years since, Operation Save America has preached a gospel of stockpiling weapons to ward off any future fight with federal agents. With the Republican Party now leading nationwide efforts to destroy not just abortion, but contraception, Jason Storms has rapidly moved from the party's fringe to its main stage. And now Storms is able to call on senior figures in the Republican Party, and he's enjoying a newfound sense of power in this Trumpified GOP. Your preacher want a yacht? Let him get a job and go buy it himself. That's right. Your preacher want a Bentley? Let him get a job and go buy it himself. That's right. Your preacher want a plane? Let him go out and sell ice cream and buy it himself. Amen. Amen. You give these bums your money, they ride in the jet that you never get a chance to ride in. That's true. That is Pastor Gino Jennings, the most honest and keeping it real televangelist I've ever seen in the game. In a minute, I will show you a couple clips of some televangelists who are quite the opposite of that. And at the end of this video, I'll show you a clip of a pastor that, uh, let's just say, he's a reverend unlike any you've ever seen. But first, I'm sure this guy, Pastor Gino Jennings, is totally on the up and up, has never had any controversy. You can tell because he tells you not to give money to other televangelists who are asking you for money to make themselves richer. Seems totally pure. Let's dig a little deeper, though, real quick. He's the founder of the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, Inc., which he started at age 21 that he said God told him to do. Uh, I don't, it seems a little uh, maybe ungodlike to include the ink on there. Like, make sure you incorporate. I'm the Lord, and this is very important. Also, uh, he, he, he started preaching at age 13 and believed that, that the Lord spoke to him then as well. Um, it seems like an odd messenger. There's a lot of adults the Lord could talk to who, you know, might have a little bit more gravitas, considering they're not 
damn children who've done nothing and won't be taken seriously. Uh, Mom, I would c clean my room, but the Lord says I don't have to. And the Lord says I don't need to eat vegetables. Oh, and also his church seems to be pretty misogynistic and has been criticized for very traditional uh, in interpretations of how women should be allowed to dress. Although if you're going to, you know, get lost in the weeds on that, that's pretty much, I mean, all, you know, fundamental Religious teachings are going to tell you a lot of stuff that doesn't match with modern life or logic. So I guess you give them a pass on that one. I don't know. How are they all the first church? Aren't they all called the first church of our Lord Jesus Christ? Shouldn't they have to start numbering them at some point? Or they can, can they all just be? It's like when a plumbing company calls themselves AAA Plumbing. So they'd be first in the phone book. Is that what's happening here? But at least he's not one of these prosperity preachers teaching the prosperity gospel, which basically is telling people without a lot of disposable income and oftentimes very poor people that the way to increase their money is to decrease their money by giving their money to God. And by God, they mean to them, to their, their church, and really just to their own pockets, to buy fancy suits and golden doorknobs for their own churches. And that by doing that, according to the Gospel of Mark, they will have their money multiplied a hundredfold by God, because God is, is a bank paying an unreal interest rate that's never been seen by anybody. But you should do it. You know, some of these total grifters, like Jim and Tammy Faye Baker, who, by the way, Jim Baker went to, to prison for years, for fraud, from his ministry and is now preaching on television again. And he's given up at least prosperity preaching. He now just preaches that the apocalypse is already happening and it's a much more depressing message and it's not necessarily getting him a lot of viewers, but you, you, you can't go back to the give me money gig, you know, when uh, you stole from the people that you said they were giving it directly to God. How are you gonna even get there? You're gonna get a big ladder? What was the move exactly? You know, these people like Joel Osteen, this this staring into an, an abandoned carnival vibe, non-human look on his face. Everything will be fine. Just don't come knocking on my door during a hurricane because we don't have room in our enormous mega church gospel theater for people who are about to die by the winds. God wouldn't want it that way. And of course, the classics of the, of the uh, prosperity preachers like Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland, Oral Roberts, Donald Trump. Yeah, I put him in there. He basically is, and it's a religion. I mean, just admit it at this point. Joyce Meyer, Benny Hinn, a bunch of real crackpot grifters trying to steal money directly from you. Oh, and based on the hundredfold quote from the Gospel of Mark, it led complete uh, criminal, in my opinion, uh, Ken Copeland to write in his book, The Laws of Prosperity, a real of that quote. And I quote, do you want a hundredfold return on your money? Give and let God multiply it back to you. No bank in the world offers this kind of return. Praise the Lord. It literally sounds like a commercial for a brokerage firm. No bank in the world offers this kind of return. Call us at we are robbing you blind. Uh, dot com. Don't, you can't call us at a website. You're confused anyway, huh? Can I empty your pockets? Too late. They're already empty. You didn't even notice my hands in your pockets, did you? So let us at least remember the wise words of Pastor Gino Jennings from the first ever, first to be there, first to do it, first in the game, first out, first there in the morning, uh, Church of Christ, who reminds you, if your preacher wants a yacht, tell him to get a damn job and buy it himself.